everybody. 大家好 I welcome you to J Palace Yamingong. My name is Yaya, and this is Hama. March twenty first is Hama's birthday, and I wanted to celebrate by talking about some interesting dog figures in Chinese folklore. So let's get started. There are two ways to say dog in Mandarin: the character Go and Chuan. Chuan is the older version and is more academically used. Usually, this character isn't used alone, but together with another character for more distinction. Go, the more commonly used character. Technically, these two characters mean the same thing, but if you want to get more technical, the best example is that Go means dog, while Chuan means canine. Throughout our civilization, dogs have been our guardians. They're our best friends, our best hunting tool, and so much more. Dogs actually play a very significant role in Chinese folklore and mythology. The myth of King Pan Hu was first recorded in the Jin Dynasty, but most likely has been passed down orally since much, much earlier. Several Chinese ethnic culture groups also trace their origins to this myth. Since this myth is so old and has been passed down by so many different ethnic cultures, there are different variations to the story. But the basic foundation is the same. Long, long ago, there was an emperor of a great kingdom. His wife complained of an earache that wouldn't go away, so the emperor gathered the land's greatest healers to help her. The healers were successful as they pulled out a golden worm out of the queen's ear. Instead of killing the creature, she was curious, so she placed it on a plate and covered it with a gourd. The strangest thing happened. Not long after, the worm transformed into a five-colored dog. They named him Pan Hu after the plate, Pan, and the gourd, Hu, that it was placed on. The dog became a very loyal pet to the emperor. The emperor had an enemy that he was never able to best, so he announced that whoever brings him the head of the enemy shall be rewarded by being married to the princess. None were successful. One day. Pan Hu disappears, only to reappear a couple days later with the head of the enemy in his jaws. The king is conflicted. How could the princess, a human, marry a dog? The emperor is startled when Pan Hu actually opens his mouth and spoke. I am actually a god," said Pan Hu. "Place me under a golden bell for seven days, and I shall become my human form." The emperor does as he is told, and for six days everything goes smoothly. However, on the night before the seventh day, the princess becomes worried about Pan Hu. He wasn't provided food or water, so she lifted the bell, and the spell was interrupted. Pan Hu did have a body of a human, but the head of a dog. However, the princess wasn't bothered, and the marriage proceeded. Pan Hu and the princess departed for their own lands and bore six sons and six daughters. It is said that these offsprings were the original ancestors of the different Chinese ethnic groups. Another well-known dog in folklore is the Hound of Erlangshen. This hound is usually depicted as an all-black hunting dog with four eyes, which is funny because Erlangshen is depicted with three eyes. Here, Erlangshen, a Taoist deity, was hunting one day when he came upon a pup caught in a trap. He heals its wounds and releases the wild pup. Sometime later, again while hunting, he hears the sounds of wild animals fighting, so he goes and checks it out. He recognizes the pup as it's fighting a bear. Erlangshen scares the bear away, and the pup, recognizing his savior, excitedly lays beside his feet. Erlangshen takes the pup home for its safety, but he can't take this dog everywhere with him. It's too dangerous for such a small dog. He leaves, but returns days later, only to find that the pup has hunted a hare as a gift. Erlangshen is taken aback, but filled with joy. This pup is returning the favor for him taking care of it. Such a spiritual dog, it must be fate. So in that moment, he decides to adopt it. He gives it an immortality pill and transfers some of his spiritual energy into the dog. From then on, you'll never see Erlangshen without his loyal hound by his side. We see this hound depicted in different media, such as *Xiu Ji: The Journey to the West* and *Fengshen Yan Yi*. 
in Xiaoji, he is seen assisting his master in the fight against Sun Wukong, and in Fengxin Yeyi, he is assisting his master against the tyrannical reign of King Zhou of Shang and his fox spirit consort Da Ji. Sometimes mistakenly called Tian Go in media, but these two hounds are two different entities. Tian Go, or Heavenly Dog, is the mythological explanation for the moon's phases and eclipses. In the myth, Tian Go Shi Yue talks about how a large black celestial dog takes a bite out of the moon each night, which is why we see the moon waning night after night. He also sometimes eats the sun, which explains solar eclipses. Some stories have the myth of Tian Go and Chang'e converging. The reason why he eats the moon every night is to punish Chang'e. Before given immortality, he was Ho Yi's hound, and seeing how his master was betrayed by his bride, chases after Chang'e as she ascended to the moon. He swallows her and the moon whole. Nu Wang Nianyang convinces him to release Chang'e and the moon, but does not punish him as he was just being loyal to his master. Instead, she appoints him to guard the gates of heaven and awarded him with the title Heavenly Dog. I feel bad for Ho Yi the most. Not only does this guy lose his wife, but also his loyal hunting hound in one day. Man's got it rough. Usually, Tian Go is depicted as a black dog with fur as dark as the deepest night. But in Shanghai Jing, there is an animal also labeled as Tian Go that looks more like a large striped cat than a dog. If Tian Go sounds like Tengu, there's a reason for that. The name Tengu is directly translated and derived from Tian Go. Tengus are a Japanese demon that bears no resemblance to dogs. Instead, it's a humanoid yokai that looks more like a bird than a canine. We're not sure how this myth changed so drastically, but the kanji of Tengu is still characterized as Tiengo. If you guys noticed, dogs and myths are usually depicted as black dogs. Unlike Western cultures where black dogs are usually seen as omens, black dogs are sought after in Chinese culture. We believe that black dogs are more sensitive to the spirit world and can ward off evil spirits. The urine of black dogs are said to be able to exercise them as well. The most iconic dog depiction that you're probably thinking about are foo dogs. Foo dogs are actually not dogs, so there's no difference between stone lion guardians and foo dogs. Most likely, the reason that Westerners call them foo dogs is because they don't look like normal lions that we see. Westerners thought that they looked more like dogs and started calling them foo dogs. This term is being slowly retired and now people call them lion guardians or stone lions. It's no surprise that ancient China has depicted dogs as man's best friend in ancient myths. DNA evidence shows that dogs were first domesticated in China and the earliest dog remains were found in the province of Hubei. So many different breeds have come from our history and some of them are considered the oldest breeds in the world. Some of the more popular breeds are Tibetan Mastiffs, Chow Chows, Sharpays, Shih Tzus, Pekingese, and Pugs. All of Hama's outfits today have been inspired by the three canine myths. Each outfit is hand sewn and painted to match the dog's characteristics. The outfit of Pan Hu is based on the artistic depictions. He has the five colors described and has the character Pan Hu written throughout. The jewels give it a touch of royalty. Erlang Shen's hound outfit is black to follow folklore depictions, but the hand-painted gold pieces are to mimic armor since the hound is his trusted hunting partner. Since Erlang Shen is usually shown in gold armor, his partner needs that golden touch too. The Tiengo outfit mixes both well-known descriptions. The base color is black like the modern depictions, but the black stripe is to compromise the ancient portrayal in Shanghai Jing. Silver highlights symbolize the association with the moon. I have a teespring if you'd like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. What do you guys think? What's your favorite dog breed? Are you a cat person or a dog person? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. 
Also, please wish Hama a happy birthday if you can. I wish I can celebrate with everyone, but I'm sure that he'll appreciate all the love and wishes. Leaving comments really does help out small channels like mine. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to J-Palace Yamingo. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, 再见了, bye bye!